Buongiorno everybody. We are here today. Um, I'm doing a quickie today because we're still unloading. I'm putting more stuff away and um, you know, it's time consuming. But uh, we are going to finish up today what we started yesterday. Yesterday, in the midst of what we were making, we started some pumpkin jam. So some marmellata di zucca. Sounds so good in Italian, doesn't it? Anyway, um, so we soaked or soaked. I had my pumpkin cubed and then we sprinkled the sugar on top and then we left it in the refrigerator overnight. So I'm gonna show you. Now, look how cool, wait a minute, let me get a... So check this out. So look at all the juice it made. This is all like a sugary pumpkin water. And there was no water in this when we started yesterday. Holy cow, that's a lot. So it was macerating. So we're gonna put this in the pot here. Mmm, smells good. And we're gonna cook it down. So the key here is we're gonna cook it down for about an hour. So most of that liquid's going to cook out of this but it's gonna sweeten and soften the pumpkin even more. So I'm gonna turn this on. And then we're gonna add the goodies to it. Now you're gonna see this pot right here, and we're not gonna do this completely 100% because I'm not gonna sit here for an hour, but maybe I'll come back live later on. Um, what we have in this pot here is some of my little jelly jars that I boiled. So I've got some of these little ones. I've got one bigger one. See, that's, that's more like typical jelly size. Those other little ones are really good for like giving them away. I also love these kind of fat mouth flat ones. Aren't they cool? I just like them. I don't know. So anyway, those are in there. They're, they've been boiled. What you want to do ideally, so I did it ahead of time. We're actually not ready for them yet. Ideally, what you want in the end is you want hot product going in hot jars. We're gonna put the um, lids and the lids and, and sealing, you know, the two parts, the, the part with the seal on it and the lids, even though the lid's not really touching anything, we're putting them all in the water in a minute too. I don't want them in there too long. We'll do it just before we're ready. And then all you do the hot jam in the hot jar sucks it all, sucks all the air out, and they're good to go for, um, they'll last you a good few months of homemade jam. So, let's add some. We're gonna add some nutmeg to this, noce moscato. So we're just gonna, whoop, drop it in there. And you know, you put in as much as you want. You know, in Italian, they call it QB, quanto bisogno, how much you need, or as needed, or to taste, all the terms we use. I have to be able to actually smell the nutmeg, and then I know it's enough. I can smell it, but I want to smell it stronger. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Then we're going to, while we have the, the zester out, I have my organic washed lemons. We're gonna put some lemon zest in. So this is gonna be, um, you know, the lemon zest of, I don't know, this wasn't quite as big a recipe as my real recipe calls for. So I'm gonna put probably, I don't know, half to three quarters of this lemon, let's see. Oh yeah, that's a good one. You know, this thing's hot. <laughs> So you've got the sweetness of the sugar, the mildly sweetness, mild sweetness of the squash. So we're making princess, um, princess jam, princess squash jam. So we're just gonna call it princess jam. So if you have a daughter, you can tell her you're making princess jam. Okay, that's most of a lemon. Never have too much lemon or nutmeg. 
Oh, that adds a nice, oh, I can smell the lemon. And then we're gonna add some cinnamon. You know, cinnamon, you really can't have too much of that. Well, you can, but I love cinnamon. Now you can actually put cinnamon, cinnamon in it, or you can put a couple cinnamon sticks in there to let them flavor it. We're gonna put in a good like heavy teaspoon, huh? maybe a little more. Mm, now my hand smells like cinnamon, not garlic this time. <laughs> oh, so that's giving it a nice, it's gonna have a nice deep dark orangey brown color. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna put in is a little secret ingredient. So let me get, oh look, a shot glass. I wonder what I'm gonna put in. Do, 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 do. Amaretto, right? That's gonna be good. So we're just gonna put in, oh, you know, I don't even care what the recipe says. Oops. There's a little piece of caramelized amaretto on the top there. We're putting in like a, a shot in a, that's probably too much. We'll put in a shot. We're not gonna put in, not quite the, oh gosh. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh, so one shot. That's good enough. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. So now this is gonna cook on a medium high. I don't wanna cook it high high because then all the liquid will boil out too quick. Um, and then it will be, you know, not long enough for it all to cook down nice. So we're gonna kick it on a, a nice, you know, medium, a high side of medium for a little bit. I want it to come to a boil first and then I'm gonna turn it down and just let it simmer. So now this has come to a boil while we were reconnecting. Um, so I'm gonna turn it down till it's just not boiling. Actually, this burner has a simmer. So I'm gonna put it on the simmer burner. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on here to simmer and I'm just gonna let it cook until that liquid has, you know, gelled up with the sugar and the, the um, and let me show you if I can, what this looks like right now. So what I wanted to see, I don't know if you can see, but the liquid is kind of, looks like iced tea or hot tea. Looks like tea color. And um, you can tell these things are starting to get soft. So this is gonna make me a couple jars, not a whole lot. I, didn't, I wanna test out the different squashes, so I'm gonna make a couple different kinds. So this was the princess squash, and then I have a half a Hubbard squash I'm gonna make some other jam out of. And I'm thinking that that crostata we made last week with the pumpkin jam on it would be such an awesome addition to um, a Halloween party or Thanksgiving or any time this fall. I think it would just be a, something new and different, not just a pumpkin pie, um, you know. But I will tell you, I gotta show you. Um, let me get a... Let me get a dish. I have to show you how good that pumpkin cake came out yesterday. So that's the pumpkin cake from yesterday. It's almost like a pumpkin pie cake. It's moist, it's dense. You sprinkle a little powdered sugar on top and mm, not too sweet. It's a nice, um, the density is just awesome. It's just sweet enough, and there's little teeny weeny chunks of the squash in here. They give it little bites of creaminess. Mm. So good. Yesterday when it was hot, and I cut the first piece. Mm. Put a pe put a little scoop of vanilla ice cream on top of that. Oh, so good. So anyway. Embrace the stir, enjoy. Oh, this is getting soft. So now it's just a matter of it all kind of congealing and getting gelled. So it's gonna take 
about an hour. I'm squishing it a little because it's fun. So that's that. So um, either later on or um, at some point when I, when I go to jar these, I'll come back on live for just a few minutes and show you how I did it. Then I'll put these two videos together on YouTube and you can see the whole thing. All right, so have a good day. I'm not doing any chit chat today because I'm putting stuff away and I'm almost to a happy place. So, you know, you know how when, if, you're, if your surroundings aren't, you know, put together, you just can't be put together here. So always remember, get rid of everything you can and um, live simple. Oh, you know what? There's a great movie called Minimalism. Watch it. I'm going to start living by that 100%. I'm done with stuff. So check it out. Have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. And then you can have some jam for breakfast tomorrow morning when you're sitting at the table with your family. Talk to you later. Ciao. I'm back. <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys a minute to come on because I'm coming on at an odd time. But I said I was going to come back and finish the jam. So once the jam has been cooking for an hour and it gets nice, remember how it was soupy before? Look at how nice and thick it is. Think of nice. Well, so it's nice and hot. You want to make sure it's hot. My jars are in here in the boiling water which I just turned off. And so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the hot jar, put it on a towel here. Take my hot, I can turn that, oops. Leave that on, we're gonna turn that off. Okay, so now we're gonna take this nice hot jar. We're gonna fill it with jam. And try to, you know, try to get it so it's not, um, you know, don't let any air, you know, make it nice and tight. You don't want to fill it all the way to the tippy top. The close. Okay, so I've got a nice jar here. And now I'm going to take out, oops, that's a big lid. One of these lids. I don't want to come out and we're going to put these put them on while they're hot here oh yeah Whoop. we're just gonna we've got hot jam in a hot jar with a lid on it and we're gonna let these sit I'm gonna put these over here undercover and they're going to the heat of the jam and the heat from the jar is going to make it all suction in and it's going to make it seal um somebody asked me if you can you know do you need to boil them i'm sure you can um this recipe which is from italy um they don't boil everything they tend to rely on the heat of the jar and the heat of what you, what's going in the jar to help it seal. So I'm gonna try it this way. I am gonna keep it in the refrigerator because I've only made enough here for probably, I don't know, four or five jars. I'm gonna give some of this away because I am testing the different pumpkins. So I'm gonna keep one for later and after I've made the different ones, I'm gonna have a test taste. So um, it's really very simple though to make the jam. I mean, there's the old other way where you can, you know, get the, the wax and cover it with wax. It's really um, more daunting and time consuming when you can do it this way. Um, one of the things I've seen a lot of people do in Italy is they'll turn the jars upside down while they're curing and sealing. Um, so I may do a couple that way and see if they suction up. So basically what happens is when you're done, the top of the jar, as long as you can't push it down, then there's no air in there. So it's, it suctions and it'll, it'll make a little vacuum. If you can move it, after you've done this process, just put it in the refrigerator and use that one first. The ones that have sealed will last you supposedly two to three months, maybe even longer. 
Um, what you want to watch for when you've got canned goods is if the top pops up and there's air in there, forget it. Um, after the, it has sealed, if it comes unsealed. Um, if it unseals and you see it unseal right at that moment, then you're okay. Just put it in the refrigerator and use it. So that means it's just come undone. It's the time that after it comes unsealed, the air gets in there and causes problems. So here my little jar is boiling. So let's jar up another one. Voila. So I'm gonna hold this here, fill up another one. And let me tell you something, oh my gosh, this is so good. It's more, almost like, it's like a cross between a jam and like apple butter. It's so creamy. Okay. The lid. Go nice and tight. I'm gonna put that one. I'm gonna put that one upside. Oh, look at this. This one here, the first one we just did a minute ago. This the top's already pushed. It is already suctioned in. It's not bubbled up, so it's probably gonna get. I'm gonna put them upside down. See if that. I want to see if that. Oh, this one's already sucking in too. Almost there. And keep them covered. And that's all there is to it. So I just wanted to come back and tell you about this and how to do it. But let me just tell you something. Okay, so what I was saying a second ago, take a piece, a little piece of provolone, a little piece of this jam. Oh. Mm. Mm. That is so good. Oh, wow. So that's some of the sharp um, provolone that you can just buy at the regular grocery store. This happens to be Bill Joyoso. Um, wow, that's so nice. And it's a different flavor than what you're used to, you know? I love fig jams. I love all kinds of jams that you make that not everybody makes. You know, it's not strawberry and grape. So try this. Have it, mm, use it in a crostata. Use it on your toast, use it with cheese and crackers. And I'm telling you, you'll impress people when you make, say, I made that. I love saying that, I made that. It's awesome. So anyway, so enjoy it, make something good, bring it to your table, you know, get the family involved. Love this. So I've got probably one, I probably have two or three more of those little jars left, or I might just make one bigger one. But anyway, go make some. Have fun, let me know how it comes out. Let me know if you like it. It's totally something different, but look at that, how beautiful it is. It's such a rich, like, autumn -y color. You know, that orangey, or burnt orange, but it's not burnt, it's just yummy. All right, ciao, that's the end of the um, marmelata de la, de, what is it? Marmelata de zucca. I'm trying to get too complicated here. It's a pumpkin marmalade, pumpkin jam. All right, jam on. Ciao.